Christopher Nolan completed his vision for the Dark Knight series with the release of The Dark Knight Rises on July 20th, 2012 here in the UK. The film was given a 12A rating and had a runtime of 2 hours and 44 minutes. The film had a massive budget of $250 million and went on at the box office to make $1 billion and $81 million worldwide. A massive haul, the biggest for the three films, considering that the first Batman's film, Batman Begins, was somewhere in the 300. It was below 400 million. Um, so fantastic for Warner Brothers. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about how um, director Christopher Nolan and Warner Brothers kind of shot themselves in the foot. They were a victim of their own success with the release of the Dark Knight um, and, and I'll explain why and I did mention this in the last video but this film suffered because of that film but, but we'll get into that a bit down the line so this film is actually set eight years after the events of the last film um, Batman's sort of gone into hiding um, Bruce Wayne is older he's a bit more decrepit he's you know his bones have been broken he's been injured and he's hobbling around like some sort of an invalid um but with the help of catwoman he's forced to come out of his exile to save gotham city from the brutal guerrilla terrorist bane yes bane from the comics bane from um the Nightfall storyline where Batman had his back broken, which does happen within this film. Um, now, this film starred Christian Bale, again, for the third time as Batman. Fantastic. Um, he's this time joined by Tom Hardy as the film's primary villain. Tom Hardy played the character Bane. Um, and Halfway joined proceedings as Catwoman. Um, Gary Oldman returned. Commissioner Gordon, I should say. Joseph Gordon Lovett as Detective Blake, a police officer um, within the Gotham PD. Marion Cotillard starred as Miranda, um, although as we know in the context of the story, she would turn out to be Talia al Ghul, the daughter of Ra's al Ghul, played by Liam Neeson in Batman Begins. To bring this stuff full circle, um, Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine obviously reprised their roles respectively as Lucius Fox and Alfred Pennyworth. Yeah, so a fantastic cast yet again. Again, a very strong cast. Christopher Nolan's a wonderful director and he does get some fabulous actors together and he knows how to draw a performance out of them. The musical score on this one was done by Hans Zimmer on his own. There was no James Newton Howard on this film. It was Hans Zimmer all on his own. So yeah, this film, like I said, I'm gonna to have to transport myself back to 2012 to think of where I was when I watched this film. Um, and do you know what? I cannot remember. I mean, I remember seeing it at the cinema, but unlike my cinema trips for the other ones, um, I cannot remember this one. That shows you the sort of impact that this film had on me. Um, but I can't recall where I saw it. I uh, guess I would like to say Croydon. Croydon Cinema um, but I don't know for certain and I don't know who with so like your meal um, anyway so like I said story plays out it's set eight years later um, like I've already discussed anyway let's talk more about the the technical aspects of this film rather than the story we've gone into the story a little bit uh, now this film concluded the trilogy and like I said I, I, I said before that this series became a victim of its own success. Right, now, this film isn't the best film. It's it's a good film, it's an okay film, it's an enjoyable film, and it's great to cap off the trilogy with. But, I'm telling you now, that wasn't the plan. This was not the original plan. After the success of The Dark Knight, um, Warner Brother and Christopher Nolan knew that they were unlikely to catch that success again that was lightning in a bottle you, you, you don't get that again yes this film earned more money that was because of the other film and the amount of money that film took and the and the interest in this but this film come away with the, the critics thought it was worse the audience thought it was worse right so like i said that warner brothers and the writers were backed into a corner they knew full well that they could never make a film as good as the last 
Um, and what would probably happen was each film would have that sort of after this one would have the diminishing returns to it um, because it was inevitable that this film wasn't going to be as good as the one before. So what do we do? Do we carry on with the series and do we do a fourth and look at doing a fifth? No, what we do is let's give it an ending. That's the only route out of this scenario that we're in is to make it a trilogy and cap it off with a finale. That's the only logical conclusion um, to the scenario that we're in is to give this film series a finale and then it doesn't really matter too much about how it turns out because it's ended anyway and and that's what they were faced with and that's what they went with so it's a frustrating film in that the script for this film is, is on the one hand is very good right but on the other hand it feels like it needed another couple of rewrites um there's sort of inconsistencies in timing in the logic of stuff within the film that doesn't make sense it, it felt like there needed to be stuff um, added to explain stuff away you know you, you've got these silly things like where the complete um, um, Gotham PD goes down into the sewer systems looking for Bane and his people right literally all of them and they get caved in and, and, and manage to survive down there for months how does this happen? I, I don't know how to manage to survive. Um, I don't know why the entire Gotham City Police Department went down there. Do they not work shifts? They're not people on shift work. And they're not people in other areas of the police department that aren't, you know, on the ground, on foot. What about the, the sort of transit police? Did they go down as well? Did everyone go down? Um, you've probably got Harbour Police, considering that, you know, Gotham's surrounded by water with all the bridges and all this sort of stuff. It, it, it just It just didn't make sense whatsoever and and these sort of silly inconsistencies occur throughout the film you know Batman how he, he came out of the, the hole and how did he get home and all this sort of stuff it, it, it's just this silly logic to the film and the film did feel like it needed more work to fine-tune that story now aside from that you know Christian Bale gave a fantastic performance Tom Hardy gave a very interesting performance for, for Bane. I know a lot of people said that they had trouble distinguishing his voice and hearing what he was saying. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't seem to have that issue for some reason. Um, Anne Hathaway I did like as Catwoman. Now I know that she's one of these actresses that can have a split opinion. And some people didn't like her portrayal as the Catwoman. I, I found it fine. Um, Gary Oldman again delivered um, as he does. Um, Joseph Gordon Lovett was was fine. Um, Marion Cotillard, she was very good, and the twist with her becoming the twist with her becoming um, uh, sort of came out of nowhere. Um, it, it was a bit silly in the way it was done. Admittedly, Morgan Freeman and especially Michael Caine, my poor Michael Caine, he's fantastic in this film, and you f really feel the upset at the end when he's at that graveyard and he's he's crying. You know, it, it's. Oh, it's, it's, it's just really, really fantastic. Um, now, I don't think the film needed the Robin ending that it gave with Gordon Lo Joseph Lovett, because that went nowhere anyway, but it didn't need that. Now, it's unfortunate that this film that this film occurred in the sense that, it, you know, imagine if we'd had a, a, a third film between this and The Dark Knight, because the way The Dark Knight ended was, was Batman on the run from the police. He was now the enemy of the police, right? Um, that's the next film we should have got. We should have got a film with that sort of a focus to the Batman until he redeems himself towards the end of the film and then go into this film. But but we never got that. And that's because, like I said, they backed themselves into this corner that they couldn't get out. Now, there's no denying that this film looks fantastic. The cinematography in the film is fantastic. You know, the money is all up there on the screen. It, it looks very, very good. Um, this is the only film where we see Batman in daylight, I believe, fighting, which is a bit odd. Um, you know, it doesn't really work that well for the character. Um, but overall, you know, the film is is a fine ending to the trilogy, but it's but that's about it, really. It's a good film. It's a good film, don't get me wrong. But as a trilogy ending, it's a good film. 
um, on its own as a standalone film like I said the film is heavily flawed and it's unfortunate it's like I don't know if they're in a rush to get it out or what I don't know what, what occurred with that sort of thing now the music score by Hans Zimmer um, again fantastic Hans Zimmer has become a, a fantastic composer within Hollywood and within and he knows what he's doing and and, and these Batman films have had very good soundtracks um, or scores composed, uh, composed to them. Now, even without James Newton Howard's involvement, still a very powerful piece of, um, piece of work by Hans Zimmer here. Um, and again, it, 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 it works for the context of the film. It needs to be uplifting that when it needs to be. It needs to be... Um, sort of have you on edge when it needs to have you on edge again it's just a, a, a great symbiotic use of music and film together that, that you know and the music raises the film that raises the bar for the film now with regards to the ending of the film you know um i like to believe that i'm in the camp of alfred seeing what he wants to see i'd like to believe that batman actually died in that explosion saving the city and didn't get uh, didn't didn't get away from it uh, and alfred's just seeing what he's seen because of what was mentioned earlier on in the film and this sort of a thing so yeah it's um it, i know this film is very divisive i know it splits people and that splits their opinion um but for me it was it, it, it's it's a good ending it's a good that's all i can say it's a good ending but a flawed ending um it's definitely the weakest of the three of these three batman films um with a couple of the others probably being better as well from from the other era of batman film but anyway so that's it that's that's my little chat about this film the dark knight rises now what i'm going to do tomorrow is i'm going to take a look at a um a, a statue from my batman collection um, just to mix proceedings up a bit and then I'll be back with another video uh, as a one-off just talking about the the Affleck era of Batman yes I'm going to take a look at all the Aff Affleck stuff within one film because they're not solo Batman adventures so I don't want to really associate them as such and then I'll have a little bit more Batman content before rounding up with a a ranking for the Batman films but having watched my videos if you have you probably know how I'm going to rank them anyway you can probably guess um, so yeah but I'll have some more stuff for you anyway so I'll come back tomorrow and we'll take a look at one of my my statues um, a closer look and yeah anyway this is AJ thank you for watching um, please hit the subscribe button and maybe the notification bell so you can keep apprised of all of my upcoming content and also if you so wish please consider leaving me a um, message in in the message box i will reply to all messages so come join me um thanks again i'll see you later take care all goodbye